Hello and welcome once again everybody. I was asked a couple of questions referring to um, the topic of multimeters. Here you have two different multimeters that you've seen in previous videos. The Fluke multimeter, this is the 83, and you have also something called the dig another digital multimeter by Wavetech, and they both have similar functions. But this has more functions. Now, the question was, which multimeter is the best <clears throat> on the market? The other question was, which multimeter do you think is the best for me? Two different questions, but they deserve two separate answers. Okay, let's, let's analyze. Now, this one over here, this has a selector switch. The best meter on the market, that's the first question, is the Fluke. This is the industry standard. This is where the bar is raised. This is the best meter out there for automotive, for electrical, for three-phase, for anything. That's why it is much more costly. For automotive, now we can also use this. Okay, what are we going to measure? We're going to measure alternator. We're going to measure battery voltage, sensor voltages, computer voltages. It's good, but not as good as this. Now, to the second point, the second question. Uh, let me move this. Second question, which is the best meter for me? That's an entirely different question from the one that we answered, which is the best one on the market. Which is the best multimeter for me depends on your level of electronics, your expertise in the family, in the, in, in the, in the industry. Now, for someone who's professional, this might be the best meter because he knows this is auto range. Just put on volts or millivolts and he understands what's going on. For the beginner, for the beginner who's starting out in technical school, this might be the best one for you. So that answer to that depends on your expertise, your level of electronics like I just uh, expressed before, how much training you have, and also what you expect to measure to use the multimeter for. Okay? So that's one question, how to answer it. The ju it's judgmental. Depends on your ability. Okay? For me, I always like auto range. Just put on volts, I don't have to worry about anything. This one, you have to put it on 750 or 200, depending on what you're gonna measure, the, the measurement you're gonna measure. Which brings us to the next question that was asked. <clears throat> when do I put a multimeter on the highest range? On the selector switch, when do I put it on the lowest range? Okay, now, I'm measuring here volts AC, okay? This is 750 volts AC. It can go down all the way down to two volts AC, RMS, or it could go down to 200 millivolt, which is 0.2 volts. So two volt, 0.2 volts is the lowest. Question was asked, when do I put on the highest range? When do I put it on the lowest range? <clears throat> okay, good question. Now, you put on the highest range where you are not sure of how much the measurement that you are measuring with the multimeter is going to be. So, so for precaution, for safety reasons, it's always better to put it on the highest one. Will I get the best digital readout on that scale? No. You're just trying to avoid damage to the multimeter. I'm measuring 120 volts RMS from the outlet right now. It tells me it's around 121 volts. Why did I put it on 750? Well, maybe because I wasn't sure how much I was measuring. So to answer his question, I always put it on the highest range to be on the safe side. Is 121 good? It's okay, but I can always bring it down to something a little better. Okay, now look at the decimal points. Before we were at, what, 121 now we're getting a better reading at 122.7. For the decimal points, it gives you more decimal positions and a more accurate reading. So to begin with, I wasn't sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to measure 500 volts, 700 volts. 
for safety, I put on 750. Once I know I'm okay, because I read 121, I'm safe to move it down what? To the next range, which is 250, because 250 is way more than 121, which I already read, and I already expect to get 121. Can I put this on the next range, which is 20? No, absolutely not. Why? Because this is 122. The next range will give me what? 20 volts or less. Can't do that to the meter, okay? So that's when you put on the highest one. When do we put it on the lowest one? Let's say I'm gonna measure on a car battery. Okay, and let me hold on for a second. Let's say I'm gonna measure a car battery. So how much should I expect to measure? Let's say 14 volts, 15 volts with the alternator running and all that, right? What's a safe range to put it on? I could put on 200 volts, I could put on 1,000 volts, I could put it on 20 volts, but what's the preferable one for me to get the most accurate reading and also the best decimal, decimal digits? If I know I'm gonna measure 12 volts, I'm gonna put it on 20 volts because that's the next highest one. If I'm gonna measure 40 volts, which range do you think I should pick? Well, I can't measure 20, I can't put it on 20. I'll put it on 200. That's if I know, if I expect to measure 40 volts. If I don't know what I'm gonna measure, I'm gonna put on what? A thousand volts. That's the safest way and bring my selector range down as much as needed to get the appropriate digits that I need. That was the question that he asked. Now let's go to, when do I put it on the lowest one? Now, you remember I made yesterday a video about how do you measure car fuses? I, I explained it three different ways. Now, continuing with the video, here's a regular car fuse, a maxi fuse. What's the three different ways that I can test the fuse? First one you always gotta say is, I always look at the element inside to see if it is melted or broken or open. But that's a visual test, okay? Like I said before, your eyes will deceive you. So to me, that's not the best test. Even though you've seen it, all across YouTube, that's what they usually do. They look at it and say, okay, it might be open from a visual. Not the best way to do it. What's the other way? The other way that I always explain to you is measure in circuit. If this is in the fuse box, I'll measure 12 volts on one side. This is in the fuse box. Here's the fuse. If I measure 12 volts on one side, and I measure 12 volts on the other side, that tells you the fuse is good. So voltage-wise, we can test it like that. If I measure 12 volts on this side and I measure zero volts on the other side, I know that the fuse is open, right? Okay? So, therefore, you're gonna say that's a pretty good test. Okay, look at what this is. Hot and accessories and run. This fuse over here, first of all, when we measure resistance, okay, let's get back to the meter. When we measure resistance, I have one <clears throat> in volts and ohms. I have the other one, the common lead on one side of the fuse. These are the blades. Does polarity m m uh, make a difference? No, it doesn't matter if I put the negative here, the positive here, this is a resistance check, okay? Going back to the question, you put it on the, the lowest one, because I know I'm gonna measure close to zero ohms. So I'm comfortable, comfortable putting the ohms on the lowest range, okay? And what happens if I don't do that? This will be kilo ohms. I won't get such a good reading like I want to. When I put it on kilo ohms, this is 0 0.00, right ohms i want to make sure now i'm sure 0.2 ohms okay 0.2 ohms is a pretty good accurate reading to me to know that what this fuse is good okay now <clears throat> going to my version over here we decided a couple of things visual not too good Okay, voltage-wise, okay, I can measure 12 volts here. Remember, this is this fuse is in a fuse box, okay? I have 
access to not the bottom, but the top of it. The top of it. This part of it, the blades, is inside the fuse box making the connection. Okay? From the top of it, hot and accessories and run. That means in accessories and run, when I have the ignition key in those, selected in those modes, I will get 12 volts. Not only in the start position, but in access, in accessories and run. This one, hot at all time, means what? Whenever I put the key in any position, start position, accessory position, doesn't matter. This one will always be 12 volts hot at all times, regardless of where I put the key or if I don't have a key. Okay, let's analyze that a little more. <clears throat> I don't have the key, an ignition key. How much will I measure here when the, when the car is off? 12 volts. How much will I measure over here? 12 volts. Why? There is no switch between here and here. There is a direct connection between here to the battery. Okay? Now, if that's the case, if it, if it is a direct connection to the battery, that means I will always measure 12 volts. If I'm going through the start, the ignition switch, hot in accessories or run, that means I cannot be hot at all times. That means when the, when the ignition switch is in that mode, accessory or run, that's the only times that it will be 12 volts or hot. The difference again, hot at all time means, regardless, if it's off, the vehicle is off, I will always have 12 volts. Now, measuring ohmmeter, and I purposely took a probe, which is green. Does it make a difference? You Aren't you used to seeing red? for volts and ohms and black. Does it make a difference? <clears throat> Not at all. <clears throat> Electrons don't care what color this probe is. It could be blue, it could be purple, but the industry standard is to have red for positive and black for negative because you'll never make a mistake for polarity. But you know, I can always see a, a different one just like I did here. I'm still getting a reading. It doesn't matter what color it is, okay? Other problem is, when we measure resistance, we cannot measure resistance in the fuse box with power applied. Never. Okay? You have to disconnect the power. So, why did I bring up this diagram? Well, hot at all times means what? It always will have 12 volts. Regardless if I have the key on, key off, this will always measure 12 volts. Why? Because it's not going through the switch. It is directly, directly connected to the battery. So the battery will give it 12 volts to one side. The other side also will have 12 volts, okay? But it depends, obviously, on this part of the circuit if this will be turned on. But we're not going to discuss that. So hot all time means you see many computer fuses, ECU, the small mini fuses, hot at all times. They always have 12 volts on it, regardless if you have the key on and start position or not. Because why? They are directly connected to the battery. You will always measure 12 volts. Therefore... Why am I stressing this? If I want to do a resistance test, according to what I just told you, you have to take the fuse out because you will measure 12 volts all the time. You cannot measure resistance with voltage applied or power applied. Okay? Now, <clears throat> getting back to the original question. <clears throat> Three methods that I, that I uh, stressed. Visual, don't like that one. Voltage, could be good, but... It could lead to errors. Which is the best? The ohms. 0.2 ohms. I put resistance on it. You cannot make a mistake. Never make a mistake like this. See? The blades are on it. And I know this fuse is good. I should measure close, uh, close to 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3 ohms. Never in the kilo ohms. Never in the mega ohms. But why is the voltage test that I just told you, described you, not the best. Okay, we just said this fuse, <clears throat> let's look at it. This fuse on the top, this part of it is in the, in the fuse box. The top of it is what? Is we can get the top of it. That's what we're gonna measure the voltage. Okay, great. But there are many fuses that have a very, very small metal conductor that it is very easy that when you put your probe to it of your multimeter, you will not make proper contact. So, what does that mean? For example, <clears throat> a 
Okay, now we're going to continue. Now, with this fuse disconnected, as you can see over here, this is disconnected, and we're going to continue this on another video.